All right, good morning, everybody. Uh, so uh, for those of you that haven't met me, my name is Sean Peden, and I'm an orthopedic surgeon trained, in, and I specialize in trauma and the foot and the ankle. And so I have the exciting task of talking about the bunion today. So <laughs> the truth is, it's actually something that uh, there's a lot of interest in foot and ankle world about it. And so I'll try to give you a little snippet of what we talk about and the different issues there are concerning it. There's a lot of misconceptions, too. So when we talk about a bunion today, I'm going to be talking about hallux valgus. And what that really is is a malalignment of the, the foot and the bones in the foot. Um, what it is is that the metatarsal here, this is the right side, has a bunion. The metatarsal bone is pointed too far to the outside, and the, and the toe itself, the phalanges, is pointed too far uh, towards the middle of the foot, or actually towards the outside of the body. And so what that results in is a bump, or an apparent bump, over the toe. It's not an actual growth or a tumor or a cyst or any form of swelling or bone spur. And so you get this kind of appearance. And there's much worse. And if Dr. Delos's pictures were a little, little funky and grossed you out, you can look at these types of pictures. And so it causes a lot of problems. And then this is what their x-rays look, look like in a really bad bunion. They come in a lot of varieties. This is a severe one. And again, you can see that bone's pointed out, the other bone's pointed in. And what ends up happening is they get a lot of other problems than just the bump. The joint itself starts to hurt. You get arthritis or pain in that joint. You obviously get pain on the bump itself. But then what happens is the normal weight bearing in the forefoot or in the ball of the foot gets disturbed. And so what ends up happening is not as much weight goes on the first metatarsal head there on the ball of the foot. And the other toes, the second primarily, here, start taking all the weight, the body weight, and that's not what it's designed to do. And so that joint gets inflamed and it gets unstable. And you can see in this picture the joint is dislocated. And so they end up with a lot of pain underneath the ball of their foot in addition to the pain on the bump, pain from the toes rubbing against each other, like in um, the picture I showed you before where they start to go on top of each other. So there's lots of different spots where they get pain. So a lot of people will call this a bunion too, and so uh, th that's why there's some confusion. What this is is just arthritis in the big toe. We, our name for that is hallux rigidus. And what they do in those situations, the patients do form a bone spur on the top of their toe, and, but that's more on the, on the dorsal aspect rather than the medial side. So that's another reason for a bump. A lot of patients will come in and say, oh, my bunions are killing me, but in reality it's just arthritis and not a true bunion. And then this is a case of someone with really severe tophaceous gout which is where the uric acid crystals actually uh, solidify in the toe and form a bump there too. And sometimes you'll look at a patient and you'll say, well, uh, maybe it's a bump, maybe it's gout. You can't tell until you see their x-ray. But in this case, that's clearly gout. And that can be intensely painful too, and it's treated differently. So there's a lot of debate over the cause of, of bunions, and a lot of uh, people don't know. It, is, it, is it from high-heeled shoes like, like this? Or, or what? And what we can tell from our, a lot of our research studies is we go, we'll go and look at patients in populations where no one wears shoes, and they still get bunions there, and they seem to get it at a similar rate. So it doesn't seem to be shoe wear that causes it, but shoe wear has an effect on it. Obviously, if you had a bunion and you wear a very tight-fitting shoe, you're going to have more pain. But really, the primary drive of it is genetics and then aging. With time, it gets more common as it goes on. And it's much more common in women, and so that's why it's an appropriate talk for today. It's three to one more common in terms of actual prevalence. And then how often does it bother women a lot more? It actually becomes symptomatic in them because of needs for shoe wear, cosmetic concerns, and, and other reasons, ligamentous laxity, et cetera. So the treatment really depends as much as the symptoms uh, on the symptoms as the x-ray. I'll get a lot of patients that come into me with heel pain or other foot problems. And, you know, they've got horrible bunions and they say, they don't bother me. And I say, great, let's hope it stays that way. Don't worry about it. If it doesn't bother them, you don't do anything about it. It should not be a cosmetic surgery alone. If somebody comes in just with a complaint of a funny looking foot, they don't have pain, you shouldn't operate on them. There are people that will do it. Um, but a good orthopedic surgeon will not because you don't want to take a, sh a foot that's non-painful and put it through an operation where you're trying to reconstruct their foot. And, you know, there's always a risk with that, and so we avoid that. And so you want to ask the patient about their symptoms and, and get to know whether if the issue is the pain over the bump, is the issue uh, more pain deep within the joint, pain in the lesser toes, is it specific shoes that seem to bring it out. One thing we'll notice is that we get a lot less patients 
complaining of bunions during the summer because they can just wear flip-flops and it's, and it's not a problem at all. But then when the winter comes around and they start wearing tight-fitting shoes and all the, the, the holiday festivities where they're wearing fancy shoes like these, then they come back in and see you. So now is the time when bunions become a lot more symptomatic. They don't get worse because of the shoes though. And what you really want to be focusing on is their quality of life. Are they having problems that are affecting their quality of life or is it more of a cosmetic or fashion issue? So the first line treatment is always, the biggest thing is just modifying the shoe wear. So you wear these big, very unfashionable shoes. Or you tell, and you tell them to get a nice, comfortable pair of flip-flops too, which actually will help a lot. You want to help the patient deal with the problem. In some cases, orthotics can be helpful. A lot of these patients have flat feet, and that seems to be correlated with, with the development of hallux valgus and bunions, but uh, it's not going to be a cure-all. Um, therapy can help to keep their heel cord stretched. A lot of these patients, uh, so many patients that come in with foot and ankle problems have a tight heel cord. Their Achilles tendon and the muscles that are attached to it are, are very tight. And if you can stretch those muscles out, you put less pressure on the front of the foot. As they walk, there's less shock going through uh, and force going through the front of the foot. So in some cases, having them on a home stretching program or actually getting them in structured physical therapy can be very helpful. Now there's lots of things if you go and Google, you know, bunion treatments out there that you can do. Um, things like uh, toe, these gel toe spacers and this strap, this brace uh, that, that tries to correct the bunion. And uh, what we found is that these, they don't fix the bunion long term. There's no tape job, there's no um, gel spacer. If you leave, your, leave it on every night, it's not going to fix the problem. Um, to do any of these things. What it will do is help you deal with the symptoms. It can make it mo less symptomatic. Uh, it can decrease the rubbing if you wear it with certain shoes. But in reality, unfortunately, it just treats the symptoms only. There's no way to reverse uh, the problem. But that said, the main one of the mainstays of treatment is also just observing it. They don't get rapidly worse. They can cause trouble, but we can always fix them in the future. And so there's no need to rush the patient into any sort of aggressive treatment. You just kind of manage them and you watch it. And uh, you know, when they become symptomatic enough, that's when you start to think about surgery. And so surgical treatment is going to be focused on per persistent pain. And what you want to do is correct the deformity in order to correct the pain. And again, it's not for cosmesis. That's a theme of my talk. We're not cosmetic surgeons. Um, the reason why is it's a, it's it involves more, and you'll see, it involves more than just a simple shaving of It's not like liposuction or a nose job. The patient's going to be off their foot for a while, and it involves actual correction of the structure of their foot. And in some cases, like this picture here, you're, the problem is really just the bump. Um, the rest of the foot is pretty well aligned, and in this case, the angle that the first metatarsal makes with the, with the proximal phalanx is not terrible. And in that case, you can just treat the bunion itself, Versus in some cases, like this x-ray I've shown you now three times, you got to do more than just the, the toe for a lot of reasons. The big toe is not the only problem here. You have to fix the other toes, A, because they're painful, and B, because there won't be room to bring the, the big toe back in if you don't correct the other toes. It'll recur. And so there's, there are just hundreds and hundreds of different ways to correct a bunion. And so what it really comes down to is you need to know a few good ways and general concepts of how we correct them. And so the old school, the original uh, surgery was just to shave the bump, just to take a, a, make an incision over the medial foot and just shave the bump right off. And that doesn't work because when there's force on an area, you're, you're, the, the, the bone will continue to, it'll grow back basically. It won't, the symptoms are still there. The malalignment is still there. Plus you're removing normal bone here and you don't want to remove a normal part of their first metatarsophalangeal joint. Um, and then the second, after we realized that, or uh, surgeons in the past realized that didn't work, they started shaving the bump off and then doing soft tissue procedures, meaning uh, what happens is the capsule on the inside of the joint gets very tight over here. So loosen that side and then tighten the capsule on the medial side of the joint and seeing if that works. But again, like Dr. Delos talked about in his last talk, this is, a, this is an anatomic bony issue, and if you try to correct the ligaments only with time, it'll fail. And so the, the rates for both these types of procedures were very poor, and so you don't do them anymore. You have to actually reshape the foot. And so there's two general ways you can reshape it. You can do osteotomies, which is to cut and shift the bone, and um, that is usually combined with the above things, which is shaving a little bit of the bump off and loosening the capsule on one side, tightening on the other. 
And there's a lot of different places and, and ways you can make that osteotomy that I'll talk about in a moment. And then the other general class is to perform a fusion, which is to actually take a joint that moves and make it not move and put it in a corrected position, take the cartilage off the joint and get the joint to heal in that corrected position and that corrects the deformity. That works very well. The problem is you lose some motion at that joint. And in some, some areas that's a problem, in other areas it's not a problem at all. And so as far as the osteotomies, there's way too many for me to go through even in an hour long talk. Um, this is one of the mainstays. It's called a chevron osteotomy because this cut here in the side of the first metatarsal is shaped like a chevron. And what you do is you cut through the, through the bone and you shift uh, the metatarsal head over. You shift it away from where the bump is. And it's a, very, it's a great procedure because it's very stable. You only have to put maybe at most a little bioabsorbable pin in it to hold it there. And so the patient doesn't have long-term metal in their foot and it works really well. Another osteotomy shown in the upper right, that's called an Aiken osteotomy, where you actually cut the, the bone of the proximal phalanx. So you can combine those two together, end up with this result. On the right here is the before picture. They've got the bump there. On the left there is the after. The, the head's been shifted over and the bone proximal phalanx has been shifted over too. This is great, um, but it only works for mild deformities. As you can see, that's not a very bad x-ray there on the right. So the greater the deformity, the more uh, you need to correct the actual alignment. What you're trying to do is take this first metatarsal bone and shift it over here and bring it in. And so the, the further these two bones, the first and second metatarsals, are deviated, the more power you need to actually bring the first toe over. And so the way we get more power is to go more proximal, which means more towards the ankle. So you make a cut more towards the actual base of the metatarsal here. And so there's a couple different ways that I'm going to show how to do it. This is called a crescentic osteotomy where you make a round cut. And then another picture here where we made a scarf osteotomy, which is shaped like a scarf, and um, another way to shift the bone over. And then quickly on fusions, you see on the left a normal shaped foot. In the middle is a bunion. A lot of times the laxity can come from the midfoot joint here which is a joint that really doesn't move much to begin with. And so what we can do in that case is called the lapidus bunionectomy, which is to fuse this joint right here. And that works very well, and actually patients don't uh, seem to miss the motion very much. And here's a before and after picture of that. Uh, in that situation, there's really not much of a functional deficit. The negative is it takes longer. You have to be off of it a little while longer, and he the healing process takes a little longer. And then in this case, this is somebody who's developed arthritis in their big toe joint. So now we're not, we're not talking about this joint anymore. We're talking about this joint up here. And you can fuse that one. That is, patients will miss that a lot. You're not going to be in four-inch heels anymore because that joint is not going to move. But it is useful in certain cases. And so the recovery is really what gets the bad rep about bunion surgery. It's really not as painful as, as people make it out to be, but it is some time off of your foot. If you have a mild bunion and you have that correction, the first one I showed, it's maybe just a few days off your foot and then walking around in this shoe for three to four weeks. If it's a severe deformity and you have to have the, the fusion surgery, you're probably going to be on one of these scooters for, for a month or so. So it, it, that is the, uh, the downside. Uh, there's really, there's a healing phase, there's a rehab phase, and then in rare cases, patients will need therapy if they need a little help uh, just getting back moving again. And in general, the outcomes are really good on surgery. You just have to pick your patients right. Um, as far as bunions, the conclusions, it's, uh, it's not a true bump. It's actually a malalignment of the toes, and uh, it seems to be caused by genetics primarily. Um, shoe wear is important, um, but it doesn't seem to be a cause, and uh, it can cause pain in many different locations, and so you want to focus on treating the pain, and you don't want to treat the cosmetic issue. Um, surgery is reserved for very few patients. We see a lot of patients with it, and very few end up having to have an operation, but the ones that do are generally very satisfied. And then there's a lot of different surgical uh, options, but in this case, in the foot, you have to actually treat the, bo the bony malalignment rather than just treating the soft tissue or the bump itself. And so hopefully you learned a little bit about it in 10 minutes and, uh, and uh, thank you very much.